As part of LGBT History Month this month, I am talking to a couple of other LGBT video bloggers, such as... Andrew Murdell. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the channel. Thank you. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. Oh, thank you. I've recently been on this channel. Like, yeah. I like it. It was I'm, like... I'm taking over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Specifically, I think today we're going to talk a little bit about like gender, identity, and expression, because Ashley, you've been very open recently about um, your hair. Yes. So, I have a really interesting relationship with my hair, and I always have. It all started like in early elementary school. There was like an instance where I was so frustrated with my hair, and I didn't feel like my hair looked like other girls' hair, and it just didn't obey, and it wasn't perfect, and I just didn't even like it. So I put it up in a ponytail, and it stayed that way for about like 11 or 12 years. I've never been in public with my hair out of a ponytail. I used to wear it in like a real legitimate ponytail, and then as I grew up I started wearing it in like a side pony and a braid. But I've always been really uncomfortable with my hair. It's never really felt like mine. I've never been happy with it, and it kind of has to do with my gender expression and the way that it feels too feminine for me. So that's why I've, I've always like hidden my hair. And recently I was really open with those feelings on my second channel, and I kind of played with the idea of cutting it all off because that's been something I've thought about. I've entertained the idea <laughs> in my brain <laughs> um, for a very long time, but never in like a realistic way. Mm -hmm. I just got a lot of support from people that I wasn't used to, essentially saying, if you want to cut off all your hair and if we'll, that will make you more comfortable in your own skin, you should do it. And so my thinking about cutting off my hair has kind of turned into probably actually going to cut off all my hair. Ooh. Yeah. So I don't think I've ever told you sort of the history of my hair. No, but your Taking Risk video is one of my favorite videos about hair on the internet, just oh, so you know. I thank you. I didn't know you watched it. That. That's kind of like a, a deep cut, and I don't like how that video turned out for a lot of ways, but I keep it up. Okay. Well, I had like a joke in there where I put like the first cut is the deepest. <laughs> I don't care what <laughs> people think I was serious, but I was not. <laughs> and so I'm re I have like super cringe when I watch that video because of sure. that one part. So very similar to you, I always wanted short hair. Like from like toddler elementary school age, I was begging my parents for short hair. And with my dad, like he was just not even, it was never gonna happen. But my mom was a hairdresser and for some reason still wouldn't let me. Like you would think a hairdresser would be cool sure. with, like experimenting. I remember like when I was in preschool at one point, she said, well like, you dress like a boy and you act like a boy. So if we cut your hair, how will people know that you're not a boy? And in my head, I was like, that's perfect! Yeah, I was like, I don't, why, where is the problem here? Yep. <laughs> but anyway, you know, she never let me cut my hair, and so for a while I had a really awful bob, because we would literally argue over inches that my hair could be cut. Sure. And it was a or horrible haircut, and then I finally realized, oh, I could grow my hair out longer and wear it in a ponytail, and that maybe might look more like a boy. So I did that, and I wore a ponytail, like, pretty much forever, like you did. Like, I had some phases of, like, trying to be more feminine, where mm -hmm. I would do other styles, or I would wear it down. Like, for a lot of high school, I finally, like, wore it down, and, like, kind of did things with it, usually I would just sure. be like, invite my friends to do whatever they wanted with my hair because I could not be bothered to actually right. figure it out. As I started realizing like my trans identity, mm -hmm. I got even more like, oh man, I should cut my hair, like this is what I need. But I kind of got lost in a couple of different things. Like one thing was I thought that cutting my hair, first of all, that, that would be like a big step towards this is real. I am trans, I am transitioning, yeah. which was scary. Having not cut my hair my whole life, like it had never been short, my mom wouldn't let me, that felt like removing a big part of my body. Right. Which was, that was weird, you know, I had never so much as had my tonsils out, mm -hmm. you know. I also felt like maybe people would know that I was then transitioning. Sure, like I thought it was mm -hmm. kind of gonna be like a coming out if I cut my hair. It almost felt more permanent than starting hormones to me for a while because like it takes so long to grow back like if I didn't like it whereas with hormones it's a slow process you can kind of stop if you don't feel comfortable. I can relate to a lot of that because I know that gender expression and gender identity can exist um, in a mutually exclusive way. They don't mm -hmm. have to be connected. Yeah. Um, but for me and the way that I'm wired they just are. My expression it's kind of like when you are in a bad mood, but you smile all the time. Sometimes your smile can actually make you happier. Yeah. The way that I dress kind of affects my identity. Like if you happen to be dressed more feminine, then you might be feeling more feminine. Right. And it's not even that you necessarily were before, but wearing those clothes kind of... Yes. Yeah, no, I, I get that. I definitely get that. Yep, exactly. But still, ultimately, I'm not that feminine. Does mm -hmm. that make any sense at all? Yes. And in fact, I have a question for you. And okay. You, maybe you might not have an answer to this, That's but fine. it's like something to think about. It's the difference between like feminine and female and masculine and male. So, sure. for example... Sometimes I can be a bit of like a gross dude bro, um, but for the most part, I'm I'm not terribly masculine. I'm very feminine in a lot of ways. But okay. while I might sometimes feel feminine, 
I always feel male. Yes, that is it. Yes, that's a great way. So like, so I have a like this gender that it's that's not like totally. I don't exactly know what my gender is, but I know that it's not at least what society uh, um, would consider like traditionally a woman. I feel like my own definition of woman, absolutely. I feel a connection to the word woman, but I also feel like super like super androgynous. While I feel connected to women, I also feel really removed from it at the mm -hmm. same time. Yeah. So so I guess that would be like my gender. But if I were to dress femininely, I would feel feminine but still have my gender. Is the... Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So one thing that, that I went through and that I talked to um, some of my other trans friends as, as they were like beginning to come out and stuff is like, we would be dressing very masculine, but I still had long hair. And that felt like people still read me as a right. woman mm -hmm. because of that. So that made me uncomfortable sometimes. I thought, I thought it didn't look that good. Like I didn't like how sure. it looked on me, but it was still like, this is a woman mm -hmm. is what people would see. So it was kind of a, that last like mm -hmm. remaining thing. I felt like, and this is definitely not like a broad statement for everyone, but just for myself, how I felt the way that especially because I also like was just wearing my hair in a ponytail all the mm -hmm. time I felt that was kind of sign of like not putting much effort in and yep, so like absolutely yeah and so like people would see first of all I'd be dressed kind of masculine and if people didn't know they were like all men's clothes it would just be like casually or like didn't put much effort into what I was wearing yeah. and I was just wearing a ponytail so I didn't put much effort into my hair right. and uh -huh. so people just thought that like I was someone who didn't care about style or my own appearance or yeah. I didn't respect myself yeah you know and uh -huh. like all of those kinds of like negative things I thought were put like, on me. like, no, that's not why. Yeah, that's not who I am at all. Like, I had a sense of style, and like, right. there were all uh -huh. different reasons why I was doing those things, and I kind of felt, and this is a, like a fairly super superficial thing, but I thought, if I got a short haircut, and I was still being red as female, mm -hmm. but I'd be red as alternative. Yeah. You know, immediately, uh -huh. like, a woman with short hair these days is red as kind of alternative. Yeah, so any of, like, you're edgy as fuck. Yeah, so I wouldn't, like, change what I was wearing at all, but uh -huh. people would then interpret it as, yeah, they've got they've got that. some sort of style going on. I don't get it, but they got it. They've got something going there. Yeah, that's something that I totally feel because like I always feel like when I'm in a clique of cis women who really like fashion and makeup and getting their nails done and getting their brows done and stuff, I never feel like like quite like I fit in because I'll never be like excited about a new hairdo or curling my hair because I always just hide my hair yeah. because I don't really like my hair. But I definitely think that I'll have a lot more pride in my hair if I cut it off because it will be like edgy. I would feel comfortable being edgy and hip and having short hair in like my street clothes. Mm -hmm. But I also have a lot of reservations about cutting my hair because I have a job that's like a corporate job that you have like a uniform that d wouldn't really totally match with the like short edgy cut. And I know that doesn't really matter, but yeah, it's just something that like, I don't know, it's a kind of a conservative job. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering if I'll get judged in like that conservative world. I just, I don't know. I yeah, don't know. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is really tough. And like, I, uh -huh. I obviously can't really relate to that. I come from a place of privilege. I live in New York City. I work at home mostly, but I am a spokesperson. So like my image is a little bit, I did actually talk to my boss. My bosses before I cut my hair. Oh really? Do I need to ask you? And they were like, no, what are you okay. doing? Uh, the one thing I will say is that, and obviously it's a little bit different because my hair was kind of tied to part of my coming out process when I cut my hair mm -hmm. and like, tied to a not totally binary, but more binary like sure. male masculine identity. There are differences here. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I will say that so many of the things that I thought were going to be like a thing Weren't? Yeah. Okay. They really weren't. I hope I cut my hair and I have that experience. Well, one thing you were talking about, like how you don't ever like doing anything with your hair, like you don't get excited about that. I think I'd get excited if I had short hair though. Yeah. I would like a faux hawk. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly, I started realizing like, man, there's so many things I want to try with short hair. I want to try this style and this yeah. style and this color and do this to uh -huh. it. And I was like, I don't have this enthusiasm for my hair right now. Yeah. So if I was going to make me happier, even in that kind of way, right. I should go for it. Another experience I had was a couple months after I had cut my hair, people started telling me that they had observed that I was more myself. I seemed more relaxed already. One of my friends who was with me when I cut my hair, he told me that it was almost as if I had had this burden taken off of me. Like I literally had a weight attached to my head that sure. had been, like cut off. And I was like, whoa. Because I wasn't really aware of that, but everyone was really saying that I just like seemed so much more of myself. I feel like there's parts of myself that I don't totally know. Some of it's like related to gender and some of it's related to just like being comfortable in my own skin. Mm -hmm. And I think that I can't um, find out more about those parts of myself if I don't experiment a little. And I yeah. feel like cutting my hair um, would be like a fantastic way to experiment. And I'm really held back by my hair just because it has a lot of like feelings about like how I already feel about myself right now. And I don't know, I feel like it's holding me back from learning more about myself, mm -hmm. which I know sounds weird because it's just hair. Yeah, no, I know, it, but it, it is, well, it is a part of you. Right. Literally. Uh -huh. There are so many things I think with gender expression that you can feel superficial 
thinking so much about or caring so much about, mm -hmm. but I guess you shouldn't, like, they are serious. They are yep. very real things. Mm -hmm. It is a thing that sometimes I struggle with of, of just like, oh, why should I care about this? Or the fact that I, I care about this is contrary to my, like, ideology on yes. gender. You know, the whole, like, gender is a social construct. Well, like, yep. yes, in some ways, and but that doesn't mean that but it doesn't matter. matter. Yes. Social constructs are, are things real. that matter. Yes. yes. Being trans of, of any sort, when you are exploring your gender, Things that society has deemed are gendered in one way or another can feel yep. very validating or very triggering to you. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so even if they are superficial things like what shirt I'm wearing today right. or how I am doing my hair, they are very important to exploring and expressing yourself. This is like just a curiosity that I had is you do have a partner with short hair. And mm -hmm. I'm wondering if like if you've talked about that or yes. like how, that, how has that affected your thoughts? It's strangely like a, it plays a huge role. Another thing that I'm a little disappointed in myself, but you know, we're all guilty of flawed ways of thinking. I was definitely had a lot of reservations about cutting my hair because I was totally, unfortunately, like playing into the whole gender role thing. Mm. I don't know, I just thought, would I be affecting the dynamic of our relationship if there was one that, if there was a person, Grace, who like expressed in a more androgynous masculine and not masculine, she's not masculine, but just in a more <laughs> androgynous way. And then somebody who expressed more traditionally feminine, femininely, would I be like throwing off that dynamic so they're not allowed to do that? Like, does there have to be one? I know, <laughs> and, I, and it's it's not real, but I wondered like, will she still think I'm pretty? Like oh, all these yeah. things. They're just like the initial gut questions that you have. And then immediately like your like logical self goes like, no, that's not how it works. It's really hard to unlearn those things. Yeah. But I think it's important to try. So I'm oh, trying. Yes. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, that's the important thing. Cause no, if we are, we are, like in this society that teaches us certain things so we are all unlearning them. Yep. I, I don't know too much about Grace's upbringing or even like her or her identity really but like probably at some point she cut off all of her hair, right? right? Uh -huh. So have you talked about that at all? Yeah. It just seems like well you are very close to someone who has gone through the experience that you're kind of considering. Right. Yeah. But she is different from me and she has so much like less anxiety of what people think of her. <laughs> and like she doesn't feel these expectations that I that aren't real. I feel like these like people around me just have these expectations of like what I'm supposed to like and what I look like but she's kind of seems like above that a little bit mm. which is great and I'm yeah. really, really jealous of it. <laughs> so when she was little she had told me that she'd always like wanted to express not super femininely and then there was some pushback from her family mm. so that was kind of hard but then as soon as she kind of like got a little older and was sort of more on her own she just decided she wanted to cut her hair and it wasn't like this at all it wasn't like an existential who am I? This is a big deal kind of thing. It's just like, I think I want to cut my hair. Okay, I'm gonna cut my hair. So it's, yeah, different. Mm -hmm. I wish I could do that. That'd be great. Yeah, me too. I It took me years to, yeah. to work. I mean, really my whole life, but years of really thinking about it. Well, I could talk to you about gender and expression for hours, as we already have today. Right, it's gonna be a long video, if, uh, you, if you keep it all <laughs> Well, we've been talking so long this morning that we got to filming this really late, and now you need to drive me to the airport. That's absolutely true. So we true. need to end this video. But I would love to hear all of your thoughts in the comments about this. And Ashley, I look forward to seeing whatever you do to continue exploring your, your gender and your hair. Thank I'm really you. excited. Watch me like, like build up all this hype about my hair and then I just get the worst haircut ever. <laughs> no, it'll be good. It'll be great no matter what you do. Okay, let's hope so. All right. <laughs> Bye guys, thank you so much. See you next time.